Giving someone a second chance can be a tough decision, as you might be afraid that the person might make the same mistake again, or that they might be undeserving of the chance you are willing to give them. When you first enter a love relationship, you don't expect bad things to happen somewhere along the road. Love is a great feeling, making us feel on cloud nine. However, sometimes two people may not be the best thing for each other or the timing isn't right. This can lead to the relationship getting too toxic, so much so that it makes you physically and emotionally dysfunctional. While it is okay to have ups and downs in a relationship, if two people are unhappy with each other or their actions serve as deal breakers, it may be time to walk away. Sometimes it is healthier to decide to move on from the relationship if things are going downhill, rather than think about relationship second chances. Read this article to learn about certain signs that tell you that you shouldn't give them a second chance. It can be incredibly challenging and disheartening when you extend forgiveness to someone who has hurt you, only to have them take advantage of your kindness and hurt you again. It's important to remember that forgiveness is a personal choice and a reflection of your own values and character, rather than a tool to change someone else's behavior. Here are some suggestions that may help you navigate this situation. Dear viewer, if watch today's video till end, I will assure you, it will change your life forever. Welcome to our comprehensive guide to the importance of never giving someone a second chance. This guide is designed to help you understand the dangers of giving someone a second chance and how it can lead to a cycle of abuse and toxicity in your life. As humans, we are wired to forgive and give people second chances. We believe that everyone deserves a chance to redeem themselves and make things right. However, this belief can often lead us down a dangerous path where we continue to tolerate abusive behavior and toxic relationships. In this guide, we will explore the reasons why giving someone a second chance can be harmful and how it can affect your mental and emotional well-being. We will also provide you with practical advice and strategies on how to recognize the signs of toxic behavior and how to walk away from relationships that are harmful to your health. We will start by exploring the concept of forgiveness and how it can be used to justify giving someone a second chance. We will then delve into the dangers of giving someone a second chance and how it can lead to a cycle of abuse and toxicity. We will also examine the signs of toxic behavior and how to recognize them in yourself and others. Next, we will discuss the importance of setting boundaries and how it can help you protect yourself from toxic behavior. We will provide you with practical advice on how to set healthy boundaries and how to communicate them to others. Finally, we will provide you with strategies on how to walk away from relationships that are harmful to your health. We will discuss the importance of self-care and how it can help you heal and move on from toxic relationships. By the end of this guide, you will have a better understanding of the importance of never giving someone a second chance and how it can affect your mental and emotional well-being. You will also have the tools and strategies you need to recognize the signs of toxic behavior, set healthy boundaries, and walk away from relationships that are harmful to your health. So, let's get started on this journey of self-discovery and empowerment. Let's learn how to recognize the signs of toxic behavior and how to walk away from relationships that are harmful to our health. Let's take back control of our lives and start living the life we deserve. In the following sections, we will explore the concept of forgiveness and how it can be used to justify giving someone a second chance. We will also delve into the dangers of giving someone a second chance and how it can lead to a cycle of abuse and toxicity. Forgiveness is a complex and multifaceted concept that can be defined in many ways. At its core, forgiveness is the process of letting go of negative emotions and feelings associated with a past hurt or trauma. It involves acknowledging the pain and suffering that has been inflicted and choosing to release the anger and resentment that accompanies it. Forgiveness is often seen as a moral virtue and is considered an important part of many religious and spiritual traditions. It is believed to promote healing, reconciliation and personal growth 
and is often seen as a way to move on from past hurts and traumas. However, forgiveness can also be used to justify giving someone a second chance. When we forgive someone, we may feel obligated to give them another chance to make things right. We may believe that they have learned from their mistakes and that they will not repeat them in the future. But forgiveness does not always mean giving someone a second chance. In fact, forgiveness can be a powerful tool for healing and moving on, even if we do not give the person who hurt us another chance. Forgiveness can help us release the negative emotions and feelings associated with a past hurt or trauma and can allow us to move on with our lives. In the next section, we will explore the dangers of giving someone a second chance and how it can lead to a cycle of abuse and toxicity. We will examine the signs of toxic behavior and how to recognize them in yourself and others. The dangers of giving someone a second chance. Giving someone a second chance can be dangerous and can lead to a cycle of abuse and toxicity. When we give someone a second chance, we may be putting ourselves in harm's way and may be exposing ourselves to further abuse and trauma. There are many reasons why giving someone a second chance can be dangerous. One reason is that it can create a cycle of abuse where the person who hurt us continues to hurt us and we continue to forgive them and give them another chance. This cycle can be difficult to break and can lead to serious physical and emotional harm. Another reason why giving someone a second chance can be dangerous is that it can lead to a loss of self-esteem and self-worth. When we continue to forgive someone who has hurt us, we may start to feel like we are not worthy of love and respect. We may feel like we are not good enough and that we deserve to be treated poorly. Giving someone a second chance can also lead to feelings of guilt and shame. We may feel guilty for the importance of setting boundaries. Setting boundaries is an essential part of maintaining healthy relationships and prioritizing our own well-being. Boundaries are the limits we set for ourselves and others, defining what is and isn't acceptable behavior. They help us communicate our needs and expectations and ensure that we're treated with respect and kindness. In this section, we'll explore the importance of setting boundaries, how to recognize when they're needed and provide guidance on how to set and maintain them. Why are boundaries important? Boundaries are crucial for several reasons. One, protection. Boundaries. Protect us from physical, emotional and mental harm. They help us avoid situations that may be toxic, abusive or dangerous. Two, respect. Boundaries show that we respect ourselves and others. By setting clear limits, we demonstrate that we value our own needs and expect others to do the same. 3. Communication Boundaries facilitate open and honest communication. By expressing our needs and expectations, we can avoid misunderstandings and conflicts. 4. Self-care Boundaries allow us to prioritize our own needs and take care of ourselves. By setting limits, we can allocate time and energy for self-care activities that nourish our minds, bodies and spirits. When are boundaries needed? Boundaries are necessary in various situations including 1. Romantic relationships Setting boundaries in romantic relationships helps prevent codependency, emotional manipulation and abuse. 2. Friendships Boundaries in friendships ensure that we're not taken advantage of or drained emotionally. 3. Family relationships Setting boundaries with family members can help us maintain healthy relationships and avoid enabling or toxic behavior. 4. Workplaces Boundaries at work help us establish a healthy work-life balance, prevent burnout and maintain professional relationships. How to set boundaries Setting boundaries involves several steps. 1. Identify your limits Reflect on your values, needs and comfort level to determine what you're willing and not willing to accept. 2. Communicate your boundaries. Express your limits clearly and assertively, using I statements instead of you statements. 3. Set consequences. Establish consequences for when someone crosses your boundaries, ensuring that you're prepared to enforce them. 4. Practice self-care. 
Prioritize your own needs and engage in activities that nourish your mind, body and spirit. Types of boundaries. There are several types of boundaries, including one, physical boundaries, define personal space and physical limits. Two, emotional boundaries, establish limits on emotional support and intimacy. Three, mental boundaries, set limits on mental energy and focus. Four, spiritual boundaries, define limits on spiritual beliefs and practices. Common boundary setting. Mistakes. When setting boundaries, it's essential to avoid common mistakes such as one, being too rigid or inflexible, two, not communicating boundaries, three, allowing others to guilt trip or manipulate us, four, not enforcing consequences. Setting boundaries is a vital aspect of maintaining healthy relationships and prioritizing our own well-being. By understanding the importance of boundaries, recognizing when they're needed, and learning how to set and maintain them, we can cultivate a more balanced and fulfilling life. Remember, boundaries are not meant to be restrictive, but rather to empower us to live our best lives. In the next section, we'll explore the dangers of giving someone a second chance and how it can lead to a cycle of abuse and toxicity the dangers of giving someone a second chance. Giving someone a second chance can be a noble gesture, but it can also be a dangerous decision. When we give someone a second chance, we may be putting ourselves in harm's way, exposing ourselves to further abuse, trauma or toxicity. In this section, we'll explore the dangers of giving someone a second chance and how it can lead to a cycle of abuse and toxicity. The cycle of abuse. The cycle of abuse is a pattern of behavior that involves a perpetrator using tactics like manipulation, gaslighting, and emotional blackmail to control and exploit their victim. This cycle can be incredibly difficult to break and giving someone a second chance can perpetuate the cycle. Here are the stages of the cycle of abuse. One, idealization. The perpetrator presents themselves as the perfect partner, friend, or family member. Two, devaluation. The perpetrator begins to criticize and belittle their victim. 3. Abuse. The perpetrator engages in physical, emotional or sexual abuse. 4. Reconciliation. The perpetrator apologizes and promises to change. 5. Repeat. The cycle starts again. Giving someone a second chance can trap us in this cycle, leading to further abuse and trauma. Signs of toxic behavior. Toxic behavior can take many forms, including dual one, emotional manipulation, two, gaslighting, three, emotional blackmail, four, passive aggressive behavior, five, physical or sexual abuse. If someone has exhibited these behaviors in the past, giving them a second chance can be dangerous. Why we give someone a second chance. There are many reasons why we might give someone a second chance, including one, Fear of being alone. Two, fear of failure. Three, fear of hurting the other person. Four, belief that they will change. Five, belief that we can fix them. However, these reasons are not enough to justify giving someone a second chance. Our safety and well-being should always be our top priority. The consequences of giving someone a second chance. Giving someone a second chance can have severe consequences, including 1. Further abuse or trauma 2. Loss of self-esteem and self-worth 3. Difficulty trusting others 4. Feelings of guilt and shame 5. Difficulty moving on from the relationship It's essential to consider these consequences before giving someone a second chance. Alternatives to giving someone a second chance Instead of giving someone a second chance, consider the following alternatives. 1. Seek support from friends, family or a therapist. 2. Focus on self-care and personal growth. 3. Set boundaries and prioritize your own needs. 4. Practice self-compassion and self-forgiveness. 5. Move on from the relationship and focus on your own healing. Giving someone a second chance can be a dangerous decision that perpetuates the cycle of abuse and toxicity. 
It's essential to prioritize our own safety and well-being and consider the consequences of giving someone a second chance. Instead, we can focus on self-care, personal growth, and seeking support from others. Remember, our safety and well-being should always be our top priority. In the next section, we'll explore the importance of self-care and how it can help us heal and move on from toxic relationships. The importance of self-care. Self-care is an essential aspect of maintaining our overall well-being, especially when we're dealing with the aftermath of a toxic relationship. It's easy to neglect our own needs and prioritize others, but self-care is crucial for our physical, emotional and mental health. In this section, we'll explore the importance of self-care, provide tips and strategies for prioritizing our own needs, and discuss how self-care can help us heal and move on from toxic relationships. Why self-care is important? Self-care is important for several reasons. One, reduces stress and anxiety. Self-care activities like meditation, yoga and deep breathing can help reduce stress and anxiety. Two, improves mental health. Self-care can help manage symptoms of depression, anxiety and other mental health conditions. 3. Boosts self-esteem. Self-care activities like self-reflection, journaling and affirmations can help improve. 4. Enhances physical health. Self-care activities like exercise, healthy eating and sleep can improve physical health. 5. Increases resilience. Self-care can help us develop coping skills and increase our resilience to deal with challenging situations. Tips and strategies for prioritizing self-care. Here are some tips and strategies for prioritizing self-care. 1. Schedule self-care time. Set aside time each day or week for self-care activities. 2. Practice self-compassion. Treat yourself with kindness, understanding and patience. 3. Engage in activities you enjoy. Do things that bring you joy and make you feel good. 4. Set boundaries. Learn to say no to things that drain your energy and say yes to things that nourish your mind, body and spirit. 5. Seek support. Surround yourself with people who support and uplift you. Virtue. Vibes is a wellness and personal growth channel that provides resources, support and inspiration for individuals on their journey to wellness. Our mission is to empower individuals to live their best lives and to spread positivity and love to all those around us. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe to Virtue Vibes today and join a community of individuals who are committed to living their best lives. Self-care activities for healing and moving on. Here are some self-care activities that can help us heal and move on from toxic relationships. 1. Journaling. Write down your thoughts, feelings, and experiences to process and release emotions. 2. Meditation and mindfulness. Practice mindfulness meditation to calm your mind and reduce stress. 3. Creative expression. Engage in creative activities like art, music, or writing to express your emotions. 4. Exercise and movement. Engage in physical activity to release endorphins and improve mood. 5. Connect with nature. Spend time in nature to feel grounded and connected. Self-care is essential for our overall well-being, especially when we're dealing with the aftermath of a toxic relationship. By prioritizing our own needs and engaging in self-care activities, we can reduce stress and anxiety, improve our mental and physical health, and increase our resilience. Remember, self-care is not selfish. It's necessary for our survival and thrival. In the next section, we'll explore the importance of seeking support from others and how it can help us heal and move on from toxic relationships. Seeking support from others. Seeking support from others is an essential part of the healing process after a toxic relationship. It's important to surround yourself with people who are supportive, understanding and non-judgmental. In this section, we'll explore the different types of support you can seek, how to find supportive people and how to build a support network. Types of support. There are several types of support you can seek after a toxic relationship. One, emotional support. 
This type of support provides emotional comfort, validation and empathy. It can come from friends, family members or a therapist. 2. Practical support. This type of support provides help with daily tasks, errands and responsibilities. It can come from friends, family members or a support group. 3. Financial support. This type of support provides financial assistance, such as loans or grants. It can come from friends, family members, or a financial institution. 4. Legal support. This type of support provides legal advice and representation. It can come from a lawyer or a legal aid organization. Finding supportive people. Finding supportive people can be challenging, but there are several ways to do it. 1. Friends and family. Reach out to friends and family members who are supportive and non-judgmental. 2. Support groups. Join a support group for survivors of toxic relationships. This can provide a safe space to share your experiences and connect with others who understand what you're going through. 3. Therapy. Work with a therapist who specializes in trauma and toxic relationships. They can provide emotional support and guidance as you navigate the healing process. 4. Online communities. Join online communities and forums for survivors of toxic relationships. This can provide a sense of connection and support from others who understand what you're going through. Building a support network. Building a support network takes time and effort, but it's essential for the healing process. Here are some tips for building a support network. 1. Be open and honest. Be open and honest with your support network about your experiences and feelings. 2. Set boundaries. Set boundaries with your support network to protect your emotional and physical well-being. 3. Practice self-care. Practice self-care and prioritize your own needs and well-being. 4. Seek out new connections. Seek out new connections and relationships that are positive. 5. Be patient. Be patient and don't expect your support network to fix all your problems. Healing takes time and it's important to be patient and kind to yourself. Seeking support from others is an essential part of the healing process after a toxic relationship. It's important to surround yourself with people who are supportive, understanding and non-judgmental. By building a support network and seeking out different types of support, you can navigate the healing process with greater ease and find a sense of peace and closure. Remember, healing is a journey and it's okay to take your time. In the next section, we'll explore the importance of self-forgiveness and how it can help you heal and move on from a toxic relationship. I am like you. I forgive people, but I don't give them a second chance. I forgive them thinking that it is their ignorance that they do not know that they are doing something wrong. I forgive them because I know that karma will take care of them. I do not give them a second chance because I believe that people are bound by their habits. They tend to repeat their mistakes unless they have made a life-altering mistake, which changes them completely. I become wary of them and do not trust them in the matter in which they have shown weakness. I may give them second chance after observing them and seeing that they have changed. Giving them second chance without verifying that they have changed or have corrected themselves will only harm me and not them. Sometimes they are so bound by their behavior that they cannot help but harm you again and again. If you don't become careful, it will you who will loose but not them. They cannot help it. Behavior and nature of a person are formed by years of practice and it is extremely hard to change. I do not feel the need to prove anything to them, least of all that I am not a fool. It is they who have done a mistake. They have to prove that they are worthy of being given a second chance. I have forgiven them in my heart and I wish them well, but I am not going to trust them until they gain my trust back. I forgive them not for them. I forgive them for myself. Forgiveness liberates my mind and heart. Forgiveness relieves me of any tension or ill will. Forgiveness gives me a chance to love. And when I find that the individual is flawed, I forgive them and forget them. 
I move on, hoping that I will find a better individual on the next corner. My life and time are important, and I'm not going to waste it on lesser individuals. We hope that this guide has provided you with the knowledge, tools and inspiration you need to take control of your life and build healthy, positive relationships. Remember, recognizing toxic relationships is just the first step. The next step is to take action and prioritize your own well-being. Whether that means setting boundaries, seeking support, or simply taking time for self-care, remember that you deserve to be treated with love, respect, and kindness. At Virtue Vibes, we're all about spreading positivity and empowering individuals to live their best lives. If you're looking for more resources, support, and inspiration on your journey to wellness, be sure to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media. By subscribing to Virtue Vibes, you'll get access to our weekly videos on topics like self-care, mindfulness and personal growth. Exclusive content including meditations, workouts and recipes. A supportive community of like-minded individuals who are on a similar journey. Discounts and promotions on our favorite wellness products and services. Don't forget to hit the like button comment below and share this video with someone who needs it. Until next time, stay positive, stay empowered and keep shining your light.